Hey guys, this is Aptarshi here and welcome to our YouTube channel. So today we are going to discuss about convolutional neural net in abbreviation which is known as CNN. And CNN is actually a deep learning architecture specialized to handle image or vision data. Okay. And uh, why a specialized architecture is required? First of all, of course, image or you know, video data is quite different from your normal structured data. Secondly, you know, uh, the unstructured data that is getting generated every day, more than 80% of them are actually image or video. And they have deep and impactful application across domains like agriculture, healthcare, you know, smart system, industrial automation, driverless car, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, uh, the tasks which are focused on our on writing programs to do some intelligent decision making from image or video data is called as computer vision, which is a sub discipline of artificial intelligence, right? And like, uh, you know, any discipline of artificial intelligence, one of the motives is to mimic human vision. Okay. And for that, it is important to understand little bit about how human vision works. Okay. And the part of the brain which is which is uh, responsible for that is called as visual cortex. And uh, we must mention about two scientists, you know, Professor Hubel and Professor Wiesel. Okay, so they actually studied in great depth uh, the vision of first uh, cats and then they moved to monkeys. And actually, because of their landmark contribution to this area. They got the Nobel Prize in the year or around 1980s. Okay, and of course you can understand that it is significant, intricate, and complex task which we cannot fathom within a short span of time. Right, so it is a very high level abstraction that we present over here. Okay, so you know uh, this is the human eye, and if you see that. Uh, the input goes through multiple layers, so you know it goes to AGN, then V1, V2, V4, IT this way, right? So there are layers, that is the first thing. Second thing is that uh, the first layer, this V1, actually uh, looks at the image or the edges and lines of the image, right? The basic constituents of an image, and as they move up through the layers, right? The final layer actually can understand complex, uh, you know, complex shapes like faces and objects, right? And uh, the same thing is also shown over here. So, you know, V1 actually focuses on edges and lines. The next uh, layer can look at shapes. Then you move to objects. And finally, you can understand more complex, uh, you know, more complex objects like face. Okay. And one thing that needs to be, needs to be looked at is the the circles the size of the circles that are there in each of these layers okay so these are called as the receptor fields okay and basically what does that mean is that the receptor field size grows as you move from layer to layer and the effect is that the initial layer can look at pretty local features okay only one part of the uh, image it can focus on or it can specialize on Okay, and then you move to higher level features, right? And actually, this uh, motivated Jan Lekun and his team to to come up with an architecture called as Lenet, okay, Lenet Five, and a bit which came around 1998, okay, and uh, you have clear layers, right? One for feature extraction. So feature extraction is what is happening in the visual cortex, right? And then classification. So classification, you can use your traditional neural network after this. And uh, there are several layers if you look at. So it accepts inputs, right? And uh, there are layers like convolution layer. So this is a convolution layer from which uh, the name convolution neural net is derived. Then you have a subsampling layer. Again, a convolution layer and subsampling layer. And finally, output of this actually goes to a traditional neural network based classifier, right? So this is the entire architecture. And basically there are you know, several nomenclatures. So the CX actually stands for convolution layers. So anywhere you see the C, 
so c1 c2 c3 c5 so that means these are convolution layers right and s actually stands for subsample layers and then um, you know you have fully connected layer so this is this is maybe the baseline uh, cnn layer there can be various uh, various variants of this okay so where you can play around you can have different uh, convolution layers then a uh, uh, sampling layer or pooling layer and and so on and so forth okay all right so now uh, let's focus on convolution a little bit however uh, uh, let me tell you this that our focus today is to give you a general idea of convolution pooling and all these things okay we will go into more details of this in subsequent lectures okay so you can think that convolution actually is some kind of high level aggregation okay so there are maybe uh, you know lot of lower or smaller grain values so maybe there are a lot of sensors that are available okay and you are going to use these sensors to have a composite value right so these sensors will have high spatial or temporal correlation okay and maybe sometime there will be noise and when in a real life scenario we try to deal with such kind of uh, situation where i have either redundancy or i have noise what do we do we do smoothing okay one and one of the simplest ways to do smoothing is actually to apply moving average right and uh, one sophistication is applying weighted moving average where you give more weightage to the more recent values okay or more weightage to the sensor which is which is uh, closer to the place of measurement okay all right so let's uh, further understand this so let's say this is a univariate data that you have got right so the data has to be one dimensional or univariate okay uh, if you have to apply a 1d convolution okay so the shape of the data and shape of convolution right uh, uh, when i say shape i am not talking about the dimension but i am saying if it is a if it is a you know a one dimension uh, uh, data then you need a 1d convolution if it is a two dimensional data you need a 2d convolution so on and so forth so you know this is these are six observations 1 2 2 3 4 5 and these are your weights of the moving average right 0.1 0.3 0.6 so what we'll do we will apply simply this formula right so we will pick up 1 to 2 and multiply with the corresponding weights 1 with 0.1 2 with 0.3 and 2 with 0.6 and i will sum it up and i will get a value of 1.9 okay and i will uh, i will go to the next window and i can proceed i so this is often called as sliding or also called as strides okay again we will discuss about this in more detail right and subsequently so i get the values 1.9 2.6 3.5 4.5 only thing uh, that is to be uh, noted is that you know you have you have a one dimensional input data you have applied a one dimension convolution and you are getting a one dimension output data however this one dimension output data this one dimension output data is of smaller size than the input data okay so uh, if we generalize we can have a formula like this so for a particular value of the output okay uh, so basically you know this is your input values okay you are going from p minus i and uh, it has its corresponding weights okay and you are applying this aggregation and this can be expressed so x is a vector and w is a vector so this can be expressed as x is your data and uh, this uh, asterisk is your convolution so this is called as a convolution and w is a filter okay so these are the terminologies that we are going to use okay all right so now when we go to images so images are represented in terms of matrix okay and uh, so you know uh, these are these are images so each of the cell of the images are actually pixels the smallest element of a image and you have the corresponding values right so you know you have four values in m4 if you see i like four values in a row and then you have four rows so 16 values so these also have 16 columns right and as you see you know there is no change in this particular uh, particular column you see that there is also no corresponding change over here right so basically you know uh, we can understand that images are 2d 
and the 1D convolution that we discussed about will not work here. So we need 2D uh, convolutions, okay? And uh, traditional computer vision uh, used to call these as as filters, okay? And one of the one of the very common filter is called a Subin filter, which can do edge detection. So it can uh, it can find out both vertical edge and horizontal edge. So, you know, if you have an input image like this and if you apply this filter, it can identify the image and actually ignore all other information, okay? And, you know, in, in traditional uh, computer vision task, you have plethora of such uh, filters, right? So, some will be called as color histograms, some will be called as local binary patterns and then there are so many variants even of finding out your edges, okay? And when we'll do a image classification so we can have different features, we will uh, try to do uh, different you know, trial and error methods, uh, uh, measure the classification accuracy. So it is quite a complex, intricate and computationally intensive task, okay? And what happens in case of, in case of a deep learning network, you know, the models come up with these filters automatically. Okay, so basically, you know, uh, this, this, if you look at this particular filter, right, this uh, particular filter, it has certain numbers, right, and these numbers can be thought as the weights or the parameters of that filter. So like uh, neural network can learn the weights of its, its connection, it can, of course, learn these weights of the filters as well. So this is the principle that convolutional neural network tries to leverage. Okay, so, you know, this is a more a visual understanding. So, this is your 2D image and how you apply your, so this is your filter, right? So, what is happening is that, you know, you are starting from this corner, right? And then you are sliding and then uh, you are applying. So, the uh, filter size and the data size on which it is going to be applied has to be same. And corresponding to that, you are getting getting your values, right? So this is how the convolution, uh, you know, goes uh, through the image and comes up with another another 2D matrix, which we call as feature map. Okay. So here is a result from one of the conference papers. So you know, they, it has some very standard uh, kernels or standard features like color histogram, color statistic local binary patterns, who moments, etc. And what they did was that they actually, you know, uh, they actually uh, tried to extract these features and then uh, combine them in different ways. So, you know, there are different combinations they have tried out. So, you see that eight combinations they have tried out and they, there can be so many more, right? And they have trained the classifier and, and come up with the classification accuracy. And whereas if you see that with CNN, you have achieved a much higher accuracy. The paper from which we have, you know, taken this uh, result is given over here, right? Okay. So we have talked about convolution. So another important building block is a pooling block. So which is used for which is used for subsampling. Okay. So it is a way to reduce computational load or introduce spatial compression. So what happens is, let's say, you know, you are looking at this portion of, an, of a 2D matrix, okay? And uh, what you do is, instead of uh, looking at all the values, you take the value, which is maximum of it, okay? So maximum because, you know, probably, uh, probably it gives you the most information. So this two by two matrix will have a corresponding one number only, if you see over here, right? So this 2D matrix is getting compressed like this. Again, this blue square is getting compressed to this blue tile over here, right? So, uh, so there is a lot of compression that is happening. And surprisingly, you know, uh, it can retain a lot of information of the image or most of the information of the image, right? So you can, you can see over here, okay? All right. So now let's uh, revise the overall progress. So we have an input. So we have images of 2D matrix as an input. So we are, we are thinking of a black and white image over here or a grayscale image over here, right? And uh, then we are, uh, you know, applying convolution. So convolutions are also 2D matrix, which we are calling as filters, which are also known as kernels. And we are applying on this 2D matrix uh, by sliding, which is also called as 
uh, striding. So uh, we get we get a 2D matrix of lesser dimension, and this is often called as a feature map. Right. So this is one filter. So one filter can be for age detection. Another uh, filter can be for texture or your color histogram. Right. So there can be K filters. And for the same 2D image, actually, I can have now K feature maps. So from one 2D matrix, I will get K 2D matrix. But these 2D matrix are smaller in dimension than my original images. Okay. So after that, we are going to apply pooling. So when we are uh, applying pooling, the feature map size is getting reduced. But whatever was the number of uh, number of 2D matrix that was coming out of the convolution layer, that will not be changed when we move to pooling. Okay. So the convolution actually expands the input space, right? Because you have different kernels, right? Different filters, and pooling actually reduces the same. And combination of these two can be applied few times, right? And it turns out that uh, pooling also has another advantage that it introduces invariance or it makes your process invariance tolerant, which we'll again discuss with uh, you know, better examples when we discuss pooling in more details. Okay? So output of the last pooling layer or, or the output of the last convolution layer is flattened and concatenated to get a 1D vector, which is now fed to a traditional neural. Right. So 1D uh, neural net, 1D input data, a traditional neural network can process. All right. So uh, this is again, uh, you know, summing up what we have discussed. So, you know, this is your input data and we're applying convolutions. So for, for the convolutions, you are getting different feature maps, right? And uh, on feature maps, subsampling is being applied. Again, a, a, a uh, convolution and pooling layer is being applied. And then it goes to fully connected layer and, and works like any other classification process. Okay. All right. So finally, one question that can come to your mind is that why not a traditional neural network, right? So this also creates feature hierarchies. Okay. So one of the important things that you need to understand is that traditional neural ne network, even if it creates feature hierarchy, so all the layers or all the neurons will look at the entire image because you know the input uh, neurons if it is a fully connected network it will have connection to connection to all the hidden layer neurons right so essentially it means it is looking at the entire image at the same time however when you are applying your filters your kernels it is only looking at a part of the image right so what was happening in your visual cortex also Okay, and as a result, it, it also turns out that your number of parameters are much less. Okay, and uh, you know, as traditional ANN takes more parameter, CNN are more explainable. So, if you know that a lot of times we try to regularize our deep learning network so that you know, one hidden neuron, one hidden neuron focuses on a particular area of the data. Okay, and and uh, that is that is one of the things you try to achieve to make your models more explainable. So, CNN is of course more ex more explainable than your traditional ANN as a result of that. And as I said, you know, pulling, uh, you know, bring some kind of scaling or rotation phenomena, making it making it more tolerant to all these all these things. Okay. And of course, uh, these are more generic because you can very clearly classify that you have a feature extraction layer and a classification layer, right? So uh, instead of using instead of using a neural network based model, you can after that even use decision tree, support vector machine, or any other classifiers. Okay, so that are kind of you know that are kind of your striking points about uh, convolutional neural network. And uh, in next lectures, we will go in much more details of this convolution and pooling, uh, pooling operations, okay, with more examples, right? So thanks a lot, guys, for uh, you know watching uh, this video. And if you have liked it, you know, please give your comments and and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again uh, for watching this video.